Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather next 10 to 14 days. Well, today's second video, day 10, will take us to around the 8th of uh, March. We'll be able to extend out beyond that. We're going to send GFS at ECM Ensembles. We're going to a couple of weeks. Have a look at the CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks, which will get us well into the second half of March. I'll get on that for you in a moment. Just say that the first video is our 6M upload. And no weekend forecast again uh, this week. So uh, the updates, of course, are scaled back a little bit at the moment. As we are going through a bit of a trying time at Gatswell Miss Towers, I think it's fair to say. Um, but uh, I'm going to have a break, uh, you know, in, in a few weeks' time, and I'll have an extended break. And hopefully, when we get back, uh, we'll be able to get things back on track, you know, later on in the uh, spring. Right, uh, okay, so we're going to start off what's happening in the... Please like, share, subscribe for the video, thank you so much, but we're going to start off with what's happening in the stratosphere at 10 HPA. So, uh, this is what's going on currently over the North Pole in the stratosphere uh, at that level of uh, 10 HPA. So, uh, the grey line is trend lines from JMA. Grey line is a trend line. Black line shows where temperatures currently are. So, we have now reached parity or even got a little bit above average the temperatures at 10 HPA there. You see it, the black line is now above the grey line, which hasn't been the case through most of this winter, just a little period there at the end of January. Um, but generally, we had a cold stratospheric temperature throughout uh, the winter, right from like early December, uh, and uh, and yeah, so uh, we are above average now, only ever so slightly, but uh, this tells us that we should start to see the uh, polar vortex winding down. You know, as the temperature begins to lift up, that should start to weaken the the PV over the Arctic and over the North Pole. So we should start to see the polar vortex beginning to wind down a little bit, going low, lower down to 30 HPA. Uh, we're still very much colder than average there, but beginning to lift up also. So where we should be at this time of year is there around minus uh, around minus 65, where we currently are is here uh, under minus 75. So uh, we're very, very cold at uh, 30 HPA still. But you can see that black line is lifting up. It's gone from being uh, under minus 80 to above minus 80. So that is like a start, isn't it? Um, and we've uh, got a long way to go, of course, until we get that to grey line. I think probably we'll get that to grey line uh, in early March. But uh, for the time being, still significantly colder. Uh, an average of 38 HPA close to the troposphere, but um, it's starting to lift up. Right, so uh, this is how the uh, temperature profile currently looks. Uh, this is from uh, Metro Seal GFS bar. So we've got this warming from the Atlantic into northern parts of Europe, just beginning to push into uh, 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 Russia and, and Siberia. So this is like a major warming. It's not a sudden stratospheric warming, but it is a major warming of uh, the stratosphere. It's taking place at 10 HPA in the strat over northern Europe and into Russia, displacing these blue colours, these are the cold temperatures at 10 HPA, displacing them more towards the Canadian side of the Arctic. Now, over the next few days, we're going to find that warming, um, albeit moderated, moving from uh, Siberia in towards uh, the North Pole itself. So we'll see the temperature over North Pole going up to something like minus 30, minus 20, something like that. If we go back to the temperature scale... Uh, that's probably going to lift a black line up to around there. So we will actually see, um, no, around there. We'll actually see the uh, temperature lifting up quite a bit, actually, I think, as we get into the next week to 10 days uh, or so. Beyond that, uh, we see that the blue colours, you know, they're weakening a lot. So this is going to weaken the polar vortex quite a bit as we go into it. gets to 14th March. You can see the polar vortex weakening quite a lot over the... Uh, next uh, week or two and displace more towards uh, northern Europe and uh, western parts of, uh, of Russia. So, the, uh, but uh, GFS backed off the idea of like a major sun traffic when we don't see those red colours, but we do see enough of a warming, I think, here to suggest that we'll have both a displacement of the polar vortex at its roots in the stratosphere and probably uh, a relatively significant weakening of the stratosphere, uh, of the polar vortex, I should say, uh, as well. So interesting developments. It will be, you know, interesting what happens with this as we go into the spring. I think we'll see quite a rapid deceleration of zonal winds as we go through March, and it'll be interesting whether that sort of sets up a blocking signal similar to what you would get with a sudden stratospheric one. Obviously, we'll keep an eye on what's happening there. Uh, right, CT currently looks like this, standing at 6.9, that is 3.2 degrees above average, that's provisional. Uh, it's yesterday to the 25th of February. 
These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles uh, for the next couple of weeks. Birmingham today to decline uh, is the 30 year upper air temperature average for Birmingham. We're starting off above average with the upper air temperature at the moment. They're going to go cooler later on uh, next week. There will be a cold snap coming up. Probably not lasting all that long, though, and then they're lifting back up. Although there is a lot of scatter in there. So we have these cold ensemble members down here, and then we have these warmer ensemble members up there. So, um, so an uncertain picture, I think, as we go into the second week of March. We may get a cold snap, but uh, you can see from all of the scatter, some of the ensemble members are really getting quite warm, by the way, up to 10 HPA. So you see more of a scatter, but there's a lot of uncertainty and a lot to play for as we're going into um, into the second week of March. Uh, first week of March, we'll see like uh, a mild start and then a cool down. Precipitation wise, uh, we're starting off uh, pretty dry and then it gets more unsettled as we go uh, further along, you know, from the beginning of March onwards, looking more and more unsettled then. Temperature anomaly is from the 26th February to 6th of March are coming out a little bit below average, uh, particularly for England and Wales. And the precipitation anomaly from the 26th February to 6th of March is driving average in the north and near normal further south. Uh, right then, so this is our latest UK bet Euro run is looking for uh, midnight on Tuesday. High pressure ridging in from off the Atlantic will bring quite a bit of dry weather as we go into the middle of next week. And then that high pressure so it weakens a little bit, but keeps going in the south anyway. Should keep quite a bit of dry weather there. But to start to relocate out to our west, we begin to pull something a little bit colder in from the north and northwest by the time we get through to next weekend. So that's a potential bit of a cold snap towards next weekend. Icon, again, showing high pressure dominating the weather through the early to middle part of next week. And then gradually lower pressure starts to move in from off the Atlantic and begins to bring some wet weather in with it. As we move up towards the end of the Icon run, which again gets to be day on Saturday. A little bit unsettled. We're trying to set up a Scandinavian high, but we've got low pressure coming back in from off the Atlantic. Shades of Christmas are there, perhaps. We don't want to think about that again. Uh, this is a GFS Midnight Run is looking. Again, it's all much of a much. It's a ridge of high pressure through the middle part of next week. We're actually weakening to the second half of the week. Um, and then high pressure sort of takes over uh, properly as we move up towards day 10. But then by day 10, which is the 8th March, begins to weaken as lower pressure comes in from off the Atlantic. And more extended rain right, shows very unsettled through the second week of March. Wet and we not particularly cold, but certainly plenty of rain doing with that. The 6Z, again, uh, showing a high pressure close to the country in the middle of next week. Slips towards Scandinavia. Second half week, lower pressure coming in from off the Atlantic. We do put wind into more of an east north easterly with the 6Z next weekend. So probably quite cold next weekend. Maybe even cold enough for a few wintry showers in the east. And then by day 10, the ridges just begin to slip towards eastern parts of Europe. Lower pressure starting to come in from off the Atlantic. Again, similar to the midnight run, the 6Z turns very unsettled through the second week of March. Deep low pressure bringing spells of heavy rain in off the Atlantic. Just actually digging south as well. So we're turning colder here, cold and unsettled. Settled, cold and wet, uh, and maybe cold for snow in northern areas. GM, again, showing high pressure through the middle part of next week, gradually slipping away as uh, lower pressure comes in off the Atlantic later on next week. It wants to settle down next week, but isn't quite able to do so, uh, always with an influence of some lower pressure from off the Atlantic. Whoops, what are we doing? We're going here. Um, no, we're going there. Uh, right, OK, so always an influence of some lower pressure um, until we get to day 10, when perhaps we've got higher pressure for more southern and south eastern areas. Still some lower pressure out to the northwest, so that should bring a lot of dry and quite mild weather for England and Wales anyway. And then Icon looks like that again a ridge in the middle part of next week, relatively dry then, a bit more unsettled for the second half of next week and a bit colder as well with winds in from more of a north or northeasterly direction. And then a high pressure properly building through as we head towards the second week of March. ECM wants to set up a Scandinavian high and get the wind into the east. That does look quite poised to bring colder air in from the east um, at, uh, at, at around day 10 or just after day 10. But we've seen from the other charts that's not particularly well supported at the moment by the other models. Uh, right, this is a precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from Tibetshow.com. We have got some wet weather coming up through the early part of next week when it goes drier at that ridge of high pressure. Uh, then more unsettled again later next week for the high pressure takes over properly and moves towards Scandinavia uh, by day 10, relatively dry, but perhaps a few wintry showers, possibly a few winter showers around eastern coast areas. These are the options on the table within the ECM ensemble today for day 10 from the Icelandic Met Office. Gets us to the 8th of March. 27 members of the ECM ensembles have that 
that high pressure over Scandinavia have winged in from the east. That does include the control and the operational run. 24 more Atlantic driven, lower pressure out to the west, bringing in the winds from a westerly direction. High pressure over France. Should be relatively mild, but could be quite unsettled uh, with that. So, um... So, uh, I mean, that's right what GFS is showing, but uh, the majority option in the E7 ensembles is for a Scandinavian high. So we may get it cold, you know, by the end of the first week of March. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. We'll get us to the 13th of March. 19 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure then over Scandinavia. And we're bringing in like a south type type for the continent. That probably brings relatively mild weather with it. 17 with low pressure to our north and income those west south west 10 again with low pressure to our west, unsettled, wet, windy, and relatively mild. And then 5 with high pressure to the north and around that we bring in easterly winds and so that would be quite cold so by the time you get to two weeks out we lose that uh colder signal perhaps by the middle of march CFSB2 finally means a 500 millibar high dominance break down to week peers. The first week peer takes from the 26th maybe to the 4th of March. The coming week will have high pressure over and slightly to our east north east. That brings the wind in from a bit of an easterly direction. Um, you know, it could get a little bit colder later on. Uh, week 2 will be the 5th through to the 11th of March. High pressure then is to our south. Low pressure away to the northwest and winds will be coming in from a west or southwesterly direction. I suppose unsettled in the north and west. Week 3 is going to be the 12th to the 18th of March. High pressure is over to the south. Low pressure is away to the north. Winds in from a west or a southwesterly direction. And then week four is going to be the 19th to 25th of March with low pressure on Iceland, high pressure in the middle of the Atlantic, and winds are coming in then from a westerly direction. Not much sign of cold weather, I have to say, with the CFS in March, other than maybe the opening weekend or so. Right, that's it, we're done then. If you enjoyed the video, please smash the like button, make sure you sub to the channel, thank you so much for both doing that. Uh, drop a comment, let us know. Let, let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. And don't forget to tell your friends and family about Gaz Worthings. It's amazing. It's incredible if you can do that for us. Right then. Uh, so that's it for today's video. Tomorrow we'll be back with 6 a.m. Uh, upload and a 10 to 14 day or two. You enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Uh, but that's all for now. And thanks for watching.